All right, welcome back. So I like to start my sequence on differential equations and dynamical systems with a really, really simple example of how we might model uh, some system of interest using matrices and vectors. So we're going to be, you know, instead of giving you a bunch of kind of boring lectures on what's a matrix, what's a vector, you know, linear algebra, I'm just going to start using them and showing you how they can be useful for modeling uh, systems that change in time. Uh, so this lecture, I'm going to kind of show you how to model a weather system uh, as a you know, kind of matrix system of equations. And then once I do that, I'm going to code it up in Python in this Jupyter notebook and also in, um, in MATLAB. And so you know, on this YouTube video, there will be chapters. And so if you want Python, go to the you know, Python code part. If you want MATLAB, go to the MATLAB code part. Um, I'm just going to probably have them both in this video. So I'm going to start off with kind of pencil and paper stuff, and then later we're going to um, do some coding. Good. So the example I want to start with is a really, really simple weather model. OK, so this is my, my weather model. Um, so weather is a big deal uh, in Seattle. And we know that there are, okay, so this is kind of a glib oversimplification. This is kind of a cutesy lecture. But you know, we're going to oversimplify and say that our weather can be three states. It can be cloudy. Okay, it can be cloudy. It can be rainy. <laughs> Remember, we're in Seattle. It can be cloudy, it can be rainy, and it can be nice. And I'm kind of joking because it's actually been a beautiful summer. It's nice a lot of the time, but you know we like to we like to talk up our rain here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a very simple probabilistic model for how you know whatever the weather is today will predict what the weather is tomorrow. And we're going to model this as a sequence of you know the weather today, the weather tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. So this is going to be a discrete um, kind of evolution in time of the state of the current weather. Is it cloudy, is it rainy, or is it nice? And so, um, you know, a lot of what we're going to see in differential equations are going to be what we call deterministic. So if I know the state of my system now, then I will exactly know the state of my system in the future. So for example, if I have a pendulum and I know exactly theta, its angle, and theta dot, the rate of change of that angle, I can, you know, uniquely and exactly specify what that pendulum will do for all future time. That's deterministic. This is what I'm going to call an example of a probabilistic model. And so I also want to give you uh, kind of this, this comfort that we can model things probabilistically or deterministically. Those are both very important strategies in modeling. OK, so let's jump in. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a probability model for if it's cloudy today, what are the chances of it being cloudy tomorrow, or rainy tomorrow, or nice tomorrow, and then the same for all of these three states. So we're just, I'm just going to make these up. This is not you know, from the weather service or anything. But let's say if it's cloudy today, then there's a 50% chance it'll be cloudy tomorrow. So 50%, that's 0.5. OK, Ooh, a little squeaky. Uh, and let's say that if it's cloudy today, there is a 25% you know, chance, a 0.25 uh, chance that it'll be nice tomorrow, and a 0.25 chance, a 25% chance that it's rainy tomorrow. Remember, probabilities have to add up to 1. So 50% is 0.5, 25% is 0.25, and these all add up to 1. So if it's cloudy today, there is probability 1 that it will be either cloudy, nice, or rainy tomorrow. So that's, that's essential that this, you know, all of the arrows going out of cloudy have to add up to 1, because that's what, how probability works. Similarly, rainy, let's say if it's rainy today, uh, there's a you know, 1 in 2 chance or a 0.5 chance, 50% chance that it'll be rainy tomorrow. Let's say. Um, you know, if it's rainy today, then there will be a 0.25 chance uh, of it being cloudy. I'm going to switch pens because it's driving me crazy. And similarly, let's say that there is a 0.25 or a 25% chance that if it's rainy today, it'll be nice tomorrow. Again, we add those up, and they add up to 1. So the probability of something happening tomorrow, given that it's rainy today, is 1. And then finally, uh, you know, nice, if I start, if today is a nice day, it actually is a nice day. Um, what are the chances that you know, it'll be rainy, cloudy, or nice? So I like to joke, you know, if it's nice today, it's not going to be nice tomorrow. Um, class is always half full. And so for this one, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to say if it's nice today, there's a 50% chance it'll be rainy tomorrow and a 50% chance that it'll be cloudy tomorrow. Okay, so this is, I just made this up. Of course, this is, you know, this is nonsense, but this is just, you know, um, a model that you can write down. So that is kind of the cool thing about mathematical modeling is, you know, you get to build these things uh, the way that you want to describe the world. So you could do this, you could measure these transitions, you know, judiciously over years and build this model, uh, or you can do other things uh, to build these models. 
And so now what we're going to do is we are essentially going to build a little, I'm going to call this a dynamical system. It kind of changes in time. It's dynamical and it's a system where essentially we're going to build a, um, a model. We're going to say that the weather today, so I'm going to say uh, X is the state of my system. This is the probability, let's call this X, is going to have three states. This is going to be the probability uh, the probability that it's rainy, the probability that it is nice, and the probability that it is cloudy. Okay, so the state of my system is a vector of three numbers that should add up to one, the probability that it's rainy, nice, or cloudy. And so if I go outside and I look up at the sky and I see blue skies, sunshine, then probability one is that it's nice. So let's say x today is a vector 0, 1, 0. Okay, it is not rainy because I'm like telling you today I went outside and it's a beautiful day. It's not rainy, it's not cloudy, it's nice. So probability one, it's nice today. So let's say, let's call this x today. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a system that x tomorrow will be, there will be some probability of if it's uh, rainy, nice, or cloudy tomorrow based on what the state of the system is today. Okay, so if it's definitely nice today, then we know that there's a 50% chance that tomorrow it'll be rainy or cloudy. Okay, so we know for a fact that x tomorrow is going to be, you know, 0 0.50, 0 0.5. We know that from this, this diagram here. So I'm going to formalize that into some math, and then we're going to program it up and see what happens as we evolve the system forward in time. Okay, so what we're going to, to try to essentially write down is this relationship that uh, x tomorrow, x tomorrow, and I'm going to add better notation later. I'm doing the kind of simplest thing. I'm calling it today and tomorrow. We're going to use better notation later, tomorrow probably. x tomorrow, this is again a vector, the probability of it being rainy, nice, or cloudy tomorrow is going to equal some big matrix A some big three by three matrix that's going to have all of these probabilities in it, times x today, my state of the weather today. And we already know that x tomorrow, again, if it's nice today, if it's definitely nice today, then we know the answer. I can just read it off of this. It's going to be a 0.5% chance, a 50% chance that it's rainy and cloudy tomorrow, 0% chance that it's nice. So the, it'll be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this A matrix, this is, a real, this is where matrices come in, so we've shown how a vector can represent the state of my system. This A matrix is what's called the transition probability, or the, the kind of Markov transition probability, of how I can take a probability of my state today and predict what that probability of the state will be tomorrow. So this A matrix essentially quantifies, uh, it quantifies, it's a big 3 by 3 A matrix, and it tells me what will it be, uh, what's the chance of it being uh, rainy tomorrow or nice tomorrow or cloudy tomorrow given that it was rainy, nice, or cloudy today? Okay, and so literally, we are, this is a three by three matrix. It's got nine numbers, and those nine numbers are these transition probabilities. Okay, so let's, let's work through this and build up this A matrix from this model that we wrote down. Okay, so A, uh, if it was rainy today, what are the chances of it being rainy tomorrow, nice tomorrow, cloudy tomorrow? So if it's rainy today, the chance of it being rainy tomorrow is 0.5. So I can write this down, 0.5. The chance of it being nice tomorrow is 0.25. The chance of it being cloudy tomorrow is also 0.25. And we can kind of check, you know, do our accounting that probability has to add up to one. This column has to add up to one because if it's definitely rainy today, something has to happen tomorrow. It has to be either rainy, nice, or cloudy tomorrow. So these probabilities have to add up to one. Similarly, I can, I can write down the second column of A it, by, by looking at is it, if it's nice today, what are the probabilities of being rainy, nice, or cloudy tomorrow? So if it's nice today, we kind of made up this, this artificial situation where it'll be 0.5 rainy tomorrow, 0% nice tomorrow, and 0.5 cloudy tomorrow. We are being pessimistic. Um, and similarly, if it's cloudy today, then there's a 0.5 chance of it being cloudy tomorrow, and there's a 0.25 chance of it being rainy tomorrow, and a 0.25 chance of it being nice tomorrow. And so this is the A matrix that propagates the probability of my system forward in time. I literally take this A matrix, 
and I multiply it by this vector of my state of the system today, and I get a new vector out, which is the state of my system tomorrow. Okay, that, that's exactly how this works is, um, you know, I, I take the, the state, the probability of my system being rainy, nice, or cloudy today, I multiply it by this probability transition matrix, my screensaver is kicking on, <laughs> and I get my probabilities of being, you know, rainy, nice, or cloudy tomorrow. Okay, and so if I want to, you know, kind of fix up my notation a little bit, I could say that um, the probability, if I have a probability, if I have some, uh, some expected weather distribution on day k, on the kth day, then I can get the expected weather distribution on the next day, on the k plus oneth day, on the tomorrow day, by multiplying this by a. And in doing so, it essentially allows me to write down this progression, I'm going to do this again in a, another color here, that if I had, you know, x on day one, if I, if I go outside and I look up at the sky and it's, you know, either a beautiful sunny day or maybe it's a rainy day or a cloudy day, um, let's just say for now that this is, you know, I'm going to say it's a cloudy day, no, sorry, a rainy day, so that's the state when I look up today, I can now predict what's the probability of my weather going to be tomorrow on day two, on x2, x on day two. And this is just going to be my A matrix times x1. And, I can and now there's going to be some probability. It's not a definite thing. There's going to be some probability that's not one of it being rainy, nice, or cloudy. And then if I want to know, well, what's the probability of the weather two days from now on, on day three? You know, today is day one. Then x3 is going to be A times x2. It's, again, I take my day two and I multiply it by a to get day three, which we know is a squared times x1, and so on and so forth. If I want day four, it's a times day three, x3. Uh, if I want day five, it's a times x4, and so on and so forth. And I can get this uh, for any number of days I like, up to big N. And so this is a differential equation model. This is a dynamical system. It's not a differential equation. I'm sorry. This is a um, a discrete update equation because these are discrete instances in, in time. But this is a lot like a differential equation. They're very closely related. And this essentially tells me how a vector representing the state of my system can propagate forward in time through multiplication with a matrix. This is a probability matrix, uh, so all of the columns have to add up to one. Okay? And so this is a really simple uh, example, very intuitive kind of warm-up example of how you can model a system using vectors and matrices. So we're going to code this up in Python. We're going to code this up in MATLAB. I think when I learned this, um, actually, I think uh, the first time I saw this was Professor John Quintanilla at the University of North Texas, and he did this with uh, washing machines. So the you know dormitory washing machine can either be broken, it can be working, or it can be under repair. And so he also you know exactly the same kind of system of the probabilities. And so you could uh, you could walk the system forward in time. Okay, this is our Seattle touch on it: uh, rainy, rainy, nice, and cloudy. Good. Uh, anything else I want to tell you? Um, okay, so I'm going to give a total teaser hint uh, down the road in a few lectures. We're going to find out that the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of this A matrix have a huge role in how this uh, probability vector X evolves in time. So does this reach a steady state? Um, you know, does it converge to some steady state probability distribution? What is that steady state probability distribution? It turns out uh, the steady state probability distribution is the eigenvector of this A matrix corresponding to eigenvalue 1. One. So that's something we'll, we'll come back to in a few lectures and really understand deeply why that's true. But for now, we're just going to code this up, try it out, play around with it um, in Python and in MATLAB. Okay, good. Okay, um, again, you can just pick if you want Python, you can pick if you want MATLAB. I'm just going to jump in and, and pick one myself. Okay, uh, let's see, here we are. Um, good. So I think I'm going to start in. Um, in MATLAB here, and I think you can see, yeah, maybe I'll just, I think uh, this is big enough. So in MATLAB, I've created um, this .m file, a script that I'm going to kind of work out, and then I'm going to plot stuff, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, um, I'm going to clear all, close all, CLC, that clears all the memory, it closes all the windows, and it clears my command uh, window down here. I'm going to define my A matrix, my uh, kind of A matrix here. So I'm going to say A equals, and this is pretty easy in MATLAB. You just define kind of, you know, the rows separated by a semicolon. So uh, the row is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0. 
0.25 semicolon, enter. The next row is 0 0.25, 0 0.0, 0.25 semicolon. Next row, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 end bracket semicolon. So I have defined this A matrix, okay? Uh, now what I'm going to do is I am going to define my um, probability of x today. I'm gonna say, literally, I'm just gonna say x today. This is not gonna be the best example of coding you've ever seen. There's lots better ways of doing this using, you know, arrays and indexing. I'm doing kind of like the, easiest, easiest way of, of implementing this idea. So this is not supposed to be an amazing code lecture. I'm just showing you kind of how to do some quick and dirty analysis. Uh, so x today is this vector, let's say 1, semicolon 0, semicolon 1. So that creates a column vector. I'll just show you what that looks like here. If I do x equals 1, semicolon 0, semicolon 0, that creates a column vector, 1, 0, 0. If I did x equals 1, space 0, space 0, that'll create a row vector. So you'll notice that putting these semicolons here is really important in MATLAB to turn this, you know, to say this is a column vector. Because if I want to multiply A times X, that X better be a column vector. That's how matrix multiplication works, is you multiply, uh, you know, a matrix times a column vector equals a column vector. This is literally the shape of the math we're about to do. X today times A equals X tomorrow. These are column vectors. So I need, I need X today to be a column vector, and I'm using these semicolons. Good. Okay. Um, good. And now I'm literally just going to do a really kind of cheesy uh, for loop. I'm going to say, you know, 4k equals 1 to 50. Maybe there's 50 days. I'm going to say x tomorrow equals a times x today. And at the end of every day, tomorrow becomes today. Uh, this is like a gorilla song. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so 4k equals 1 to 50. I'm going to, this is you know, so, so there will be like a, a example on my course website, you know, links below that will give you kind of an overview of how to do for loops and while loops and stuff in MATLAB, the same thing in Python. Uh, but I also do think this is a really nice way for you to get, you know, brushed up on how to do these things is just to, to live code some things. So for k equals 1 to 50, we're going to literally step through 50 days. Okay, so 50 days. And we're going to say x tomorrow equals a times x today. Pretty simple, x tomorrow, the probability tomorrow is a times the probability today. And so each of these k's from one to 50 is a new day. And so the, at the end of today, tomorrow becomes today, or today becomes tomorrow. So let's say uh, x today equals x tomorrow. So at the end of, so, so once I step my state forward in time for the next day, today will be the state tomorrow. Ah, there's no good way to say this. On day, now, on day k, x today is xk, and x tomorrow is xk plus 1. But on the next day, k plus 1, then x today is xk plus 1, which was the x tomorrow from today. You'll, you'll get this. You'll get the hang of this. Um, every time I step this thing forward on the next day, uh, I have to reinitialize my state today with the state that was tomorrow yesterday. Good. Okay. Uh, and I have to say end in MATLAB. And I probably want to plot some stuff. Uh, maybe I'll just plot x tomorrow every, you know, for all of these 1 through 50. And I think I can save this and run this. Uh, good. Okay. So it runs super duper fast. And you can actually see all of these outputs. It's outputting x tomorrow, x tomorrow, x tomorrow. And they all look like they're the same number. So I'm going to scroll up and see if, if they ever were not. Okay. So for maybe I should actually say what k is also. Uh, k, I'm going to output k, and then I'm also going to output x tomorrow. Not putting a semicolon on this is telling MATLAB to print that quantity. So if I just say k with no semicolon, it'll print k. And x tomorrow equals a times x today, it'll print a tomorrow. And here, because I put a semicolon on the end of this line, 12, it's not going to print that line. Okay, so on day 50, uh, or on day 49, this is the probability, so 40% probability of it being rainy, 20% probability of it being nice, 40% of it being cloudy. Uh, let's scroll up to k equals 1. Okay, so on, on the first day after today, on k equals 1, you know, my, my probability tomorrow of my state is 50% uh, chance of rain, 25% chance that it's nice, 25% chance that it's cloudy. Let's see if that checks out. If today was rainy, 
If today was rainy, then there is a 50% chance that it's rainy tomorrow and a 25% chance that it's cloudy and a 25% chance that it's nice. So that checks out. But what happens on the second day, on the k equals 2 day? So now I take this 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 state and I multiply that by a to get the probability on the next day. And that is, uh, you know, 0 0.375, 0 0.1875, 0 0.3750. So, you know, this probability is, is different. And to get the probability of the weather on the next day, I take that state times A, and that equals, um, you know, this probability, you can see it's starting to kind of almost converge to 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. And very quickly, within, you know, five or six days, this thing has converged to the steady state probability distribution, to this, this steady state probability. So for this weather model with these numbers here, from any initial state actually, from if it starts rainy, if it starts nice, if it starts cloudy, you should code that up and try that. Start with a different initial condition. All of those after a few days, after 10 days, are gonna converge to this steady state probability distribution of 40% rainy, 20% nice, 40% cloudy. Those are the probabilities. And again, I told you I would, um, I would demonstrate this, that this is in fact uh, related to the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that A matrix. I'll just show you that because I think that's really important for you to see that. Even if you don't remember what an eigenvalue or eigenvector is, I'm gonna have a whole set of lectures on that. In a few weeks, you're going to totally understand how this works. I'm just showing you that if I type in, uh, you know, eig, let's say uh, T comma V equals eig of A. So, um, these diagonal, oop, not t comma v, t comma d. So the d matrix here, these diagonal terms are the eigenvalues. Uh, so I have eigenvalues 1, 0.25, minus 0.25. And the corresponding eigenvectors are um, these columns here on the left, uh, these columns of t. And um, you'll notice that these columns of t don't add up to one. This is a problem because we need our probabilities to add up to one. So if I normalize these so that each of the columns adds up to one, let's just see like, so I'm gonna take the, the eigenvector, the first column corresponding to eigenvalue one, so this first column of T, and I'm going to normalize its probabilities so they add up to one. So I'm gonna say uh, evec one equals T colon comma one. This is literally saying like my eigen, I'm, I'm defining something called my eigenvector one as the first column of T. And I'm going to normalize it so it has probability one. So I'm going to say, uh, let's say sum of E vec one, okay, is that, but I think it should add up to one. So I'm just going to say E vec one equals E vec one divided by sum of E vec one. And now, lo and behold, this unit probability normalized eigenvector is exactly what my steady state distribution was. So the eigenvector of this A matrix corresponding to eigenvalue one, once I normalize its probability to be sensible to add up to one, this is in fact the steady state distribution of my system as I iterate it through. So really powerful things. You can predict the future. You can predict the steady state future distribution just by knowing this A matrix. I actually didn't even need to iterate the system 50 days into the future because if I know what this A matrix is, I can compute the future steady state distribution just with the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Again, um, you might not, you're not supposed to know exactly what that means, but that's just a teaser for what's, uh, what's coming next. What I really want to show you here is that you can model kind of the simple system as a probability, uh, you know, the state of the system as a vector, and that state evolves in time by matrix multiplication, and you can code it up in MATLAB. Good. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing in Python now. Okay, so now we're going to code up this uh, example in Python. So we are going to take the state of the system um, today. I'm going to look up at the sky and say, oh, it's nice, or it's rainy, or it's cloudy. We're going to initialize that state. We're going to define this A matrix, and we're going to write a code to step through, you know, it, given what the probability today is, what's the probability of the weather tomorrow? What's the probability of the weather two days, three days, four days, five days? And we're going to um, analyze and kind of plot and look at that distribution. Okay, so um, I like Jupyter Notebooks. Um, you know, you can install this uh, using pip install or conda. You need an up-to-date Python and a Jupyter Notebook. And so I'm gonna do a new Python Notebook. Here we are. And this is gonna be our environment where we're going to build this example. Okay, so uh, to do that, the first thing I'm going to do, um, 
Python is a very powerful general language, so I'm going to need to uh, import some environments. There's a little bit more syntax because it can do so much more stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import numpy. This is literally like you know the numerical package in Python. Import numpy as np. Uh, and I'm going to bring in some plotting tools so I can plot some stuff. So from uh, matplotlib, these are both packages, numpy and matplotlib. From matplotlib, I'm going to import uh, pyplot as plot. So this is basically going to give me these packages np and plot that are going to allow me to do math. np is going to allow me to build you know, matrices and vectors, and plot's going to allow me to plot stuff. Okay, I'm going to run that. Good. Uh, now I'm going to define my A matrix and my X vector. So A equals, and unlike in MATLAB, you can't just define this thing you know, using brackets. You have to define it as a NumPy array. So it equals np.array of, uh, and now I'm just going to enter in the elements row by row by row. Okay, so it's an, it's an NP array. The first row is 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 comma 0 0.25 semicolon. The second row, is 0.25 comma 0.0 comma 0.25. Next row, the third row, the last row is, and I hope you can see this, I think you can, is 0.25 comma 0.5 comma 0.5 and bracket. So this is essentially going to create a NumPy array, an array in this NumPy you know, uh, data structure. Uh, an array structure using this NumPy package that has this row, this row, and then this row. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. Hopefully no errors, good. And if you wanna print it out just to see if you did it, you just say print A, and that's my A matrix. And it is in fact exactly what I want it to be, good. Okay, so that's, uh, that's my A matrix. Now I'm gonna make my vector X today. And again, we're gonna walk it forward uh, through matrix multiplication. So uh, x today equals, um, you can define vectors in a simple way, just saying, uh, you know, comma 1, comma 0, comma 0. So we're going to say that it's nice today, uh, print x today, and confirm. Uh, I actually want this to be a vector, but we'll, um, yeah, maybe, maybe I want this to be, uh, maybe I'm going to make this an NumPy array also. I'm going to say that this is an np.array. Uh, and I'm going to make this one comma zero comma zero because I want this to be a column vector, right? This, this state X should be a column vector. Let's hope I didn't mess it up. Yeah, now it's a column vector. Okay, so uh, I actually need this thing to be a column vector for it to make sense. And I can do matrix multiplication really easily. I could say um, like print A, I believe it's at X today. And that is going to give me a times x today, which is again a, uh, a column vector of the probabilities of my state tomorrow. Okay, good. So I'm just kind of, uh, for some of you, this might be your kind of first foray into, uh, into Python, so I'm going kind of slow here. Um, okay, so now we're gonna write that for loop that walks through, you know, for a number of days, let's say 50 days, uh, we're gonna step through, you know, from today to tomorrow. Okay, so let's do that. And let's say, um, for k, okay, so it's not from k to 1 to 50, it's for k in the range. Uh, in range um, 50, so for k in range 50, that's like 1 to 50. Okay, and you have to put a colon at the end of this to know that everything after that is going to be in this for loop, and it's indented by a tab. So for k from 1 to 50, uh, what we're going to say is x tomorrow equals a times x today. Okay, and at the end of today, my state tomorrow, the, the state that was tomorrow today becomes the today state tomorrow. Okay, so I'm stepping this forward and then at the end of the day, x today becomes x tomorrow, okay? Um, and I think what I wanna do is I want to print uh, x tomorrow at every single step. Okay, I'm just gonna do this. Um, good, and I'm pretty sure this will run, so I'm gonna run it. Okay, and it's a little messy because it's, you know, there's all these brackets here, but we'll work through it. So essentially, this first piece here, that is uh, at K1, the first day in the future, this is the probability. The second day in the future, this is the probability. The third day in the future, this is the probability. Maybe I'll print K also. I'll print K, and then I'll print X tomorrow. 
Okay, good, this is a little easier to read. So today, on day now, on day zero, because that's how Python indexes, it starts at zero. So day now, day zero, the probability tomorrow, oops, I need to reinitialize x today. Notice this is, uh, these are all the steady state distribution. Um, let me, let me reinitialize x today. Okay, and now I'm gonna rerun this. Good. So if x today is this vector, meaning it's rainy today, 0% nice, 0% cloudy, you know, 100% rainy, then um, at k equals zero, the probability of weather tomorrow is 50% uh, rainy, 25% cloudy, 25% nice, so this makes sense. And then the probability another day in the future at k equals one is this vector times a, that gives me the next day. Uh, two days into the future, you take that previous vector times a to get this one. Three days in the future, you take this vector times a to get the next one, and so on and so forth. So you can walk this probability vector x forward in time. x on day zero, you multiply it by a to get x at day one. You take x at day one, multiply it by a to get x at day two, and so on and so forth. And you can see, actually, it's interesting, this thing is almost starting to converge at 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So if I scroll down a little bit very quickly, within you know five or six days, the probability has converged to this steady state distribution um, where the probability of it being rainy is 40%, the probability of it being nice is 20%, the probability of it being cloudy is 40%. And again, uh, in a few lectures, I'm going to show you, we're going to derive kind of from scratch that this steady state probability distribution is, in fact, the eigenvector of this A matrix corresponding to eigenvalue 1. That's a property, in fact, of all of these Markov probability transition matrices. Any matrix where its columns add up to 1, which is a, trans a probability transition matrix, the probability of transitioning from a state today to a state tomorrow or from one state to another state, if it has that property uh, of conservation of probability, so all the columns add up to 1, then it will always have an, eigenvec an eigenvalue equal to 1, and that corresponding eigenvector is going to be this steady state distribution if I iterate my system through here. And it doesn't matter what my initial condition was. It doesn't mean if it, it doesn't matter if it was rainy today uh, or cloudy today or nice today. So in fact, you should code this up and you should sw switch around this initial condition. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's cloudy today or maybe it's nice today or maybe it's rainy today. Start from all of those initial conditions and confirm that very quickly this steady state probability distribution converges to this 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. Okay, that's uh, definitely going to happen. Okay, um, and I'll, I should point out um, a lot of my, the, the majority of these Python codes that I'm running were actually written, modified from my MATLAB codes by Dr. Alan Kaptanoglu. Uh, so I'm very grateful uh, that he put these, these codes together. And he actually made them really, really nice. So for example, something else we can do is instead of just watching this vector kind of evolve discreetly as a printout, what if I want to save those states so I can plot them? Okay, what if I want to save each of these x's in time? So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a, an array that's going to hold all of these columns, and it's going to be called the weather. And the weather is going to be a NumPy array, and we're going to start off by filling it with zeros, size 50 by 3. Okay, so this is, um, you know, kind of a, uh, I think, I'm probably going to want to make it 3 by 50. Uh, I think I want to make it 3 by 50. Okay, so we're basically going to have this, this big array, the weather, and the weather is going to keep track of what my x vector was on day, day one, day two, day three, day four, all the way up to, to day 50. Okay, um, and so at the end of every day when I have computed x tomorrow, what am I going to do? I'm just going to say um, the weather at th this... Um, kth column, the current column, the kth column of this weather array, I'm just going to uh, populate it with x tomorrow, with this, um, with the probability of, of x tomorrow. And so I'll draw a little picture because I actually think this will help. I'm literally going to have this huge array of the weather, size 3 by 50 or 51, something like that, I think 3 by 50. And every time I step through a day, I'm literally going to plug in, you know, x1, x2, x3. And so this thing's going to be a big array of all of my probability states over all of the days. So these are the states, and this is time. Okay, that's what the weather is. Let's hope I didn't create a typo, because I'm uh, transposing Alan's notation here. I definitely messed something up. Um, I probably shouldn't have 
done this like this. Hmm. Okay, so you're going to see me live debug Python here. Okay, so I figured out the problem. Uh, the problem, if you read the error message and I just say, uh, I do this, I get this error in this line that says the weather, you know, this zeroth column of the weather equals X today. Uh, it cannot use shape three comma one into shape three. So that's basically telling me that X today is a three comma one sized array and the weather is expecting something that's just shape three. So if I kind of pull out the zeroth column of x today, even though it only has a single column, that will get rid of the error message. And this thing converges. Okay, so um, I'm pretty sure that I could uh, have define this in a better way so that this didn't happen. You can go check out Alan's code. Of course, all the links are here um, and his, you know, is going to be cleaner than, than my version of this. But, you know, essentially what we've done is we have taken uh, as the state of the weather evolves in time, we've put those into as columns into the weather, this big array that has all of those columns as they evolve in time. Uh, again, remember that Python starts its indexing from zero, not from one. MATLAB starts its indexing of arrays from one. Python starts its indexing at zero. So if I want the you know, first column of the weather, that is the zeroth column. If I want the first column of x today, it is the zeroth column. So you gotta just be careful with that. So now I have this data structure, the weather, and uh, let's just see here, I'm gonna reinitialize my x today and rerun all of this. And you can see my system evolving just like before. But now the last thing we can do that's kind of fun is now we can actually plot uh, the evolution of these states in time. So we can use this plot.plot. .plot. Uh, remember we imported um, from matplotlib the plot command. So pyplot the weather, the weather. And I'm going to include a grid and we're gonna run that. Um, I probably want to transpose this thing. There you go. Okay. And so these are the three states of my system um, plotted. So on the x-axis is time, the y-axis is probability, and these are the three states of my system. Uh, and so you can see that the probability very quickly within like the first five days, you know, the, the rainy and cloudy probabilities converge to 0 0.0. There's a 40% chance. And the nice probability converges to 20% chance. So this is kind of plotting in time how the states of the system evolve. And we could throw up a legend if we wanted and, you know, say, uh, you know, rainy, nice, cloudy are going to be these colors, you know, uh, rainy, cloudy, Nice, um, but this just gives you an idea that you can plot this thing. Okay, good. Um, and again, if you're following at home and you're, you have you know, the, the uh, Jupyter notebook that, that Alan wrote and you have this, you'll notice that I kind of uh, foolishly diverged from the plan and I transposed my vector you know, into a column vector because that makes more sense to me, but the code is actually a lot cleaner as Alan realized if you just use the row vector. So you can kind of see where my code diverged and where his code is better. Okay, um, that's pretty much uh, it for the coding. So I'm actually gonna shut this down for now. And so I'm just going to do a super duper quick recap. Um, again, you can model systems as they evolve in time. Uh, you can model the state of your system as a vector, and that vector could be a you know, set of probabilities of belonging to one of these states. There could be a transition matrix A that propagates that state forward in time. Uh, something I like to point out is that you know, this was a really simple toy model, but you know, systems can get really big really fast. Uh, so for example, you know, this looks like a toy model. It's kind of make-believe and cheesy. But let's say, you know, really quickly, I can start making this pretty sophisticated. Let's say I take uh, planet Earth and I grid this thing up. So I have, you know, I have every little grid box that has square sides of one kilometer. Let's say one kilometer by one kilometer. Now I can keep track of this state, if it's rainy, cloudy, or nice, at every grid point on planet Earth. Uh, 
And so now the state of my system is massive. It's you know probably millions or billions uh, of degrees of freedom because now I have this probability at every single point uh, on the surface of the Earth. Okay, so systems can get really, really big, really, really fast, um, pretty easily. And, and you know, using these very simple ideas, you can start actually building pretty complex models for how things evolve in time. Maybe you know, cloudy, rainy, and nice is not actually a very good uh, descriptor. Maybe what I want to do is I want to have you know the temperature, the humidity, the um, the pressure, things like that. Maybe I want to have some. Um, you know, how cloudy it is, things like that, at every single grid point in space for planet Earth. Again, you could build a huge model, this huge, huge A matrix model would propagate that system forward in time. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is gonna be a theme, you're gonna see this a lot, that um, systems can get really big, really fast, even these very uh, toy systems, you can start to bring those into real world modeling, you can model, you know, like every square kilometer on the surface of Earth as a probabilistic weather model. And then it becomes a lot more, first off, probably a lot more realistic because now things depend on their neighbors and those will affect the probabilities, uh, but they also become a lot bigger computations and a lot kind of harder math problems. Okay, uh, just a really intro kind of overview of how you can model things with matrices and vectors. Thank you.